welcome, welcome, welcome to another induction problem. This one is going to prove for all integers n, this statement is true whenever n is greater than 6. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is help us out a lot by defining this predicate p of n, which is that 3 of n, which is true when 3 of n is less than n squared. We'll use this notation a lot through this problem, so it'll be very helpful. Like in part a, which is the basis step. We don't have to do this first, but we are in this problem. And where should we start? Well, n is greater than 6, so we're going to prove p of 7 as the bottom rung. p of 7 is the 3 of 7 is less than 7 factorial. And here I pulled out a calculator and found that 3 to the 7th equals this very large number, which is less than this larger number, which equals 7 factorial. And check mark, we proved it. Riveting content, I know. Okay, and next we move on to the inductive hypothesis, which is going to assume P of k for some integer k that's bigger than 6. Whew, that was a mouthful. I also always write out what P of k means in this step. I guess you don't have to, but we're going to use this assumption in our proof. We didn't assume this for no reason, so it's nice to write out what this statement is because it's a tool we're going to use later. Okay, moving on, let's go back to this color. We need the inductive step. So I'm going to be clear what we're trying to prove, which is p of k plus 1, which is that 3 to the k plus 1 is less than k plus 1 factorial. The way I normally do this, but there are multiple ways, is to start with one side of what we want to prove and work to the other side. So in this case, I'm going to start with 3 to the k plus 1, and we're going to do a bunch of steps and end up at k plus 1 factorial. This is similar. We've been doing this since logical equivalencies. Start with one, logic, one side of the logical equivalencies, use equivalency laws each step as we go down. But here, instead of equivalency or even equals, we have two options to us. We can make a step that's equal to the previous step, or we can do something that makes that is bigger than the previous step. Because we want to end up proving that 3k plus 1 is smaller than k plus 1 factorial. So if we start with 3k plus 1, we can do any step that gets bigger. It's kind of weird to think about, but I'll show you what it looks like. So now we're starting with 3, k, 3 to the k plus 1, and this looks kind of similar to the inductive hypothesis we assumed. So my first question I ask myself is, how can I use this inductive hypothesis? And I look at this, I think about some algebra rules, and maybe we come up with this. That we can pull the 3 out and get 3 times 3 to the k. This is convenient because we know something about 3 to the k. And I'm going to use that inductive hypothesis here to keep the 3 around, and then instead of 3 to the k, I know that k factorial is bigger than 3 to the k. So I'm just going to change that here. I told you the inequalities are weird, but it works out. Okay. Now we need to get from this line to this line. Hmm. Well, how are these lines similar? We can rewrite k plus 1 factorial as k plus 1 times k factorial. And now, these two lines are very similar. The difference is the 3 and the k plus 1. So let's think. What do we know about k? We know that k is greater than 6. So what can we say about 3 compared to k plus 1? Well, k 
at its smallest is seven. That's why the basis step was p of seven. So k plus one at the very smallest is eight. So k plus one is always gonna be bigger than three, no matter what k is, because k is already gonna be bigger than six. So this inequality holds. So actually we can just use that and go right from this line to this line. Definitely make sure to write out this explanation I wrote on the right here about why you went between those lines and why that's valid. And now we're actually done. We proved it. That's kind of cool. Uh, oh, but I kind of lied. We're not totally done. We're going to need to write out the conclusion, part D. I'll make that really clear. This part kind of annoying, but just write it. It'll get you points on the homework, it'll get you points on the exam. If you don't write it, you're in those points. And it really helps cement what we did in this whole proof, because it's kind of hard to keep track of. So the question is really just telling the reader of your proof what you did. And what did we do? We proved p of 7 is true, and we proved that for all k greater than 6, P of k implies p of k plus 1. So, by induction, what did we end up proving in total? We proved that for all n greater than 6, p of n. You could also write out p of n. If you very fully wanted to say this, we proved that for all n greater than 6, greater than n is less than n factorial. Which is good because that's what they told us to prove. And now we're done.